Hey guys, so I've been looking at a lot of vintage collections. I'm going to explain something very weird. And if you understand this, you're probably one of the OGs. When I came to Houston, I graduated law school. And I finally got a real paycheck. And it was pretty large. So I had disposable income. Something I did not have for a long time. So I went out and tried to buy some magic collections. Again, I didn't really know what I was doing compared to today. And I really didn't have that big of a YouTube channel. I actually started the YouTube channel. It was actually called New Law Student. That was my new YouTube channel. And then uh, I deleted that channel and made a strictly magic channel. Because New Law Student was actually a combination of this channel and eventually Lust Channel. So what I found out was you couldn't really mix the two audiences. Because one was for lawyers and one was for magic players. It doesn't mix... Uh, there are not that many lawyers who are magic players, even though there's a lot of people online who pretend that they're lawyers, which, by the way, is a legal anonymous person giving fake legal advice. But, you know, hey, I have a, a law channel. It's doing really well at this moment in time, and I, you know, it's it's been great. Now I have two different channels to focus on. Okay, so I moved, so I graduated law school in 2012. I got my first real paycheck, paid off all my student loan debts and so on. Around 2014, I was looking for really nice collections. It was very common, at least in the area I live in, Houston, that when you were looking for a collection, people had dual lands. Uh, almost everyone had dual lands for sale. You had Unlimited. I remember Underground C was buy listing for $100, and that was uh, revised. And that was a big deal that the revised Underground Sea had hit $100 in time. But you had Tabernacles. Yeah, you had a lot of mother effing old cards that I grew up with when I was a kid that I wanted to buy. So I went out. I bought some of it. I bought some of it. I bought some of it. And in all reality, and this is what I'm going to make a video about it, I had a great time buying it. It was cheap, and I still have some of that stuff today. Some of it sold, but some of it I still have. Now, move on to when I got a lot more money and I started my business. I didn't work for somebody else. I started a business, so I had more money. So I went out in the market again, and there was no alpha and beta to be bought for any price. There just wasn't a liquid. I mean, there was just no collections for sale. And so when I first moved here in 2012, there were plenty of alpha, beta, plenty of unlimited, infinite amount of revised. I'm just going to focus on those three set, those four sets, but you you can probably understand their legends, Arabian Nights, they they follow the same kind of thing. No one wanted to sell these cards. Um, no one wanted to sell Alpha and Beta. So fast forward to 2015, I started a marketing agency, which I still own today, and I came into a bunch of bunch of money, right? Because it was doing very well. Uh, when you own your own business, you make up a lot more than you make as an employee, it turns out, which it should be logical, right? And then I had money, so I went to the market again. And I said, you know what? I want to buy Alpha Beta. I couldn't buy Alpha Beta. There was no Alpha Beta buy, but there was a lot of Unlimited, and there was a lot of Revised. That was 2015. That was three years later, out, there was no Alpha and Beta left. Then in uh, 2018 was when my business was doing really well um, during, you know, and we'll go to COVID. There was no unlimited left. And in 2020, I remember people panicking because of COVID. GP Houston got shut down. Uh, I was going to go to, I was actually not, it was called Magic Fest at that point in time. This is 2020. And I realized, you know, during the great pandemic, you couldn't even get revised cards. Revised cards were spiking to the moon. Now, here at the end of 2023, in December, I can get whatever I want. Alpha and beta collections are coming in. I had uh, two emails last week. Massive alpha beta collections, and they were reasonable. The price was reasonable. It wasn't crazy. It wasn't like, oh, I want five times your buy list, or this, or that. I mean, it was, you know, it was uh, good prices. <laughs> Honest to God, it was just prices that I think are actually reasonable prices. And so Alpha and Beta is back on the table. Wow. So for about seven years, I have no one has ever... There, there were some single cards. Some people tried to sell me graded cards that I'm not a fan of. 
you know, I again, I don't give you much of a premium for graded cards, so you're probably better just selling it to somebody who does give you a premium. But occasionally, every, you know, so often, an alpha, beta card, maybe a small, small collection will pop up. But nothing like, uh, nothing like today. And I thought those times that ended, I thought, okay, so what happened is all the wealthy people got all the alpha and beta cards. So what I thought was consolidation, essentially. That alpha investments and Rudy Chans and all these Timmy Chans, they've collected, they consolidated the whole collection. So once their collection, let's say they go ahead and buy 4,000 alpha cards and they get them all graded and they make a YouTube channel about it and so on. Well, interestingly enough, right, um, these collections are now on sale again. So what no one has told you, and what you probably don't know because you don't have a YouTube channel, um, a lot of this stuff is um, for sale. A lot of this stuff that, you know, and now of course they're graded. I hate graded cards. I just hate them. I hate them, but like you have to buy them sometimes in the collection, so it's annoying that I like so much of this shit. But a lot of this stuff is like, no one's going to tell you this because they don't want the market to go down, but the market is down. You're looking at buy list right now from Card Kingdom. But these things that you would never expect to hit the market is now hitting the market. And it's not just magic cards. It's old stuff like Inuyasha. It's Fire Emblem. Like things that I'm just like, wow. That is very interesting. I am very intrigued in what actually is the, you know, the supply and demand side. There's a lot more supply than anyone can imagine. Um, in the last month, I've had three or four emails, uh, just in the last week alone too, where people are trying to offload sizable, sizable collections of alpha and beta. And I have not had those emails since 2012, 2013 when I was trying to buy a collection. Now, I'm glad for the collection I have. Uh, it's not a huge collection of Alpha and Beta because I kind of missed that window. Then the question becomes, you know, hey, now I have more money. Do I go in again? It's an interesting question. It truly is, right? Um, I don't know. I don't know because the prices, I can tell you when I... In 2013, 2015, a PSA 8 or 9 Black Lotus from Beta was, the guy was from Atlanta, and he wanted 20k for it, but he probably could have taken 19. And then from that point in time, just I didn't see any other big deals hit my emails. Now I'm seeing massive whale deals hit there, and it's interesting. Uh, do I pull the trigger on it? Do I buy it? No. I mean, even my friend who has a massive anime figure collection. I obviously have the biggest in Houston. Um, she wants to offload $10,000 at a really, really like low price point. And my girlfriend's like, no, we can't buy that. <laughs> you know, Cause they're like, you know, this is waifus and stuff. Um, but it's interesting that large collectors are offloading massive collections right now because they desperately need the money for their other ventures. Right, other businesses may not be doing so well. I know C owns a restaurant, a bunch of restaurants, um, and she's probably looking to make payroll. I don't know. Anyway, bye guys.